Oh, whoa, whoa, we smoke something. Well, greetings, everybody. This week, we're going to be reassembling this 1988 Honda TRX 200SX engine that I tore down a couple weeks ago. I got a bunch of new parts in. Hopefully, I ordered everything that we need to replace and get this thing back together today. So I think I'm going to do a little inventory, work on cleaning up these cases, getting them ready to put back together, look at the uh, service manual and parts diagrams a little bit, and we'll get to putting this thing back together. Stick around. Now, if you're one of the lucky 64 people that saw the disassembly video, you'll remember the reason why I'm doing this is this bike threw its chain and smashed up the stator cover and gouged up the left side crankcase cover pretty bad. So I went to the Ebays and purchased a new cover. Uh, the guy said that it was in good shape, not damaged. What do you think that is there, buddy? Oh, oh, eBay. It looks like, looks like Homeboy used a bandsaw or an angle grinder to get that uh, gasket off there. So that's really nice. Okay, so my thoughts to get this little bit of a dingus out of here and get Cowboy's belt sander marks off this. A piece of glass, throw it on the bench, piece of sandpaper, and I'm gonna go to town and mill a little bit off here like this. Yeah, it's kind of a bad deal here. A little bit of jiggly wiggly. And unfortunately, at the time of making this video, I could not find a replacement stator cover for this. I don't know if these engines were that rare, why I'm not able to find one. There's one on the Ebays right now, but I'm not spending close to $400 just to get this video done. I figure I'm probably going to make about a buck 75 on this video. I don't think I can justify that cost for right now. So I think right now I'm going to hack together a patch out of some sheet metal JB weld this in and just get this done for the video. It's not the end of the world because if I do ever run across a new cover, I can pop this one off on the bike, no problem, and put a good one on. So let's hack away. All right, so I let this piece cook in the ultrasonic cleaner, got it really clean. This piece, our little metal patch, just like that, it's clean. I've got a piece of glass set right there so this will be perfectly smooth. My thoughts are, pop this down here, we'll goober up our JB weld through this little crack, the mating surface there, and then I will pop our patch on vice clamp it there and there. Let that sit up, then we'll flip it over and do the inside as well. Oh, this kind of grosses me out doing this, but the price that folks wanted for these darn things on eBay is kind of cost prohibitive, especially when this video is probably going to make about, oh, buck 60, buck 70. I don't want to spend over $400 for just a stator cover. So we're going to make this work to get going on the rest of the build. Okay, let's push our little patch flat on the glass. Move it around to get make sure the glue's all worked in everywhere. All 
And I think we are pr doing pretty good. I'll go grab a clamp. Clamp right there, let that sit for about an hour. I'll move on to the other side. What an absolute poop show. Now, should be able to clamp that down. Let that sit up and we should have no leaks. Absolutely breathtaking. Okay, so I've got all the paint off the old clutch cover and the stator cover. Sandblasted that guy. There's my JB Weld patch. Yeah, not the best, but this is gonna hold. Got a solid piece of metal right there. Hopefully you can see solid piece of metal on the inside. This is all glued down, super scuffed up. I just finished sanded everything with 400 grit paper. Yeah, I think once I mask that off and paint it it should look eh, it's gonna look like somebody spray painted over top of jb weld but it should hold hold oil in Okay, it's about time to figure out how all of these parts fit in these parts. So, There you go, look at that. Look at go Harbor Freight. Yeah, yeah. Good well, job, I'll be Harbor darned. Freight. I'll be done. Let me Makes mark you. this the, the upside up swing up. Oh, there's yeah. so the, the that side goes up. All right. right. The edge goes up. Could take an impact. Is, is it moving? I can't tell. Yeah, it's moving. Sure about that? Yep. Uh, I'm trying to hold the crank at the same time so it doesn't move flying. Okay. Keep this side warm until we get that crank cooled down. That other one takes a set. Gotcha. Easy enough. About 20 minutes in the oven at 200 degrees and they expand pretty good. Oh, okay. Here, go for it. 
Easy, mm -hmm. easy enough. Well, I'll be darned. Now, this part here, we might have to really heat it up or press it on. Yeah, she definitely. Oh, no, it was stuck. Just as soon as it hit, it stuck. What's going on? seeing any torque specs on the case bolts in the service manual. I think that means it's, it's this much torque. Okay, now that the case is buttoned up, I think I'll just check to see if she'll shift. Spin the shaft here while moving the shift star, or where the shift star would be, move the shift drum, I'd say. And we should get different gears. Okay, so there's reverse, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Heck yeah, man, she's so smooth, too. Fifth. Fourth or third. Second. Hard to do it with one hand. Now, before I tighten that all the way down. Neutral, neutral. One gear. Mm. Another gear. Mm. Another gear. So this, this just floats. I mean, there's no, yeah. there's nothing. Yeah, it just flies all around in there, huh? Just chain tension keeps it from it flopping out. Oh, it's almost got my finger in there. There and there. Get on there, buddy. So that keeps the whole shebang from flying apart. Okay. All right, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about it. I don't know what I'm thinking. Why didn't I paint the case black before I put it together? 
Uh, uh. Well, while we're waiting for parts to arrive, I might as well prep everything for paint. Paint the engine black. So, take a little 400 grit paper, scuff everything up. Paint should work very nicely on this because everything's been degreased and cleaned, super cleaned in ultrasonic cleaner. Finish it up, etch it a little bit with 400 grit sandpaper. This should look fantastic. <laughs> Okay, so I've got the case and the covers all painted up. Things turned out pretty darn shiny. A couple little fish eyes here and there. There must have been a little bit of gunk in the air, but yeah, this is gonna be just fine. Parts are starting to roll in. I've got the cylinder over at the machine shop. I'm getting bored out to a 65.5. I think that's 020 over yeah so as soon as that's done we'll be able to do the top end but for now let's focus on getting this put back together and we'll take a look at how my jb weld bondo job that did back here on my patch yeah that will work by the time i get the chain guard on here you're not going to see any of this and the sheet metal up here and back here are mating up perfectly with the original so this should have no problem sealing and that's gonna be super strong I couldn't find a reasonably priced um, reverse safety switch and shift indicator guy so I'm just going to bypass that I'm just gonna tap some threads in here I'm gonna put a little cop copper crush washer in there run a little allen screw in there and totally get rid of that shift indicator and that'll be fine for this. Yeah, I can figure out if I'm in first or second gear on my own, don't need that. I guess before I put the stator cover back together again, I might as well check all the coils. Looked on the service manual, the alternator is supposed to be between 100 and 300 ohm. So let's put that on the red black. This should be able to go on the green. So between 100 and 300, we're getting 184. Should be good. And the pulse coil should be the blue, yellow. Oh wait, that's not grounded. Since that's not mounted to anything right now, we're just gonna have to go right on this guy. So this is 311 has grass streets for your money.
Well, that should seal that shift indicator hole just fine with that copper washer and that bolt thread it all in there. I think the stator cover is ready to go. Yeah, I'll leave all the wiring out of here. This bracket doesn't quite fit here anymore since that's all goobered up, but this will get us running. I don't like they can only buy gaskets in lime green or pink. Not gonna match my motor, so we're gonna fix that. So I think it's sealed up nice on the patch back there. Well, guess we'll find out shortly. Yeah, that oiling chain is just a little better than before. Just a little. That should do. Now all these doodads, that, that, and that should be it. And we should be able to put the case on this side. A little rattle can job on the starter. These bolts were all nasty and rusted out, so I just kind of painted over them. 
at the first go around. So I'm just gonna take one out at a time in the starter. I'll get the paint off of there. Run on the polishing wheel, get all the rust off of there. And at that point, give it a little bit of shot of some candy gold and then some clear coat. And we'll have, dang, some brand new yellow zinc bolts. Just dust it on. There, we've got a brand new zinc plated bolt. Cool, that should work. Oop. Okay, so let's take a look at the rocker assembly here. Yep, this should be pretty simple to take apart. O-ring here. Pop these bolts off the adjusters. The rocker arms should slide right out and that should be all there is to this part. Piece of cake. Now I'll probably wanna keep everything organized like that, so I don't get these mixed up when I put it back together. Um, one thing I noticed upon inspection, folks, I'm not sure if the camera's gonna focus on this, but that doesn't look normal, does it? Well, when I wait for new rocker arms to arrive in the mail, might as well bag this stuff up, get to work on pulling the valves out and see what kind of fun, fun lurks in there. test thinking let's put this like just like that that should work throw a little gas in the combustion chamber leave it sit for a couple hours and if we got no gas on uh, paper towels we should be good to go should be Yeah, nothing's leaking yet. Good sign. All right.
Well, as wore out as these here, it beat into those valves. Look at how many mm -hmm. thousands of an inch. That thing had a rattle like crazy. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if he had ever adjusted these. Oh, I can see right. To compensate for the wear. I can see. But they've only been set once from original factory. There's no other. They never adjusted the valves at all. This thing must have just rattled like <laughs> crazy. Just run it. Hey, it just just beat it. Just beat it. All right, so our uh, valve adjustments. I was looking, so let's just push back until you can feel them hit the valves. And go back one mark. Right there. And right there. Easy enough. Man, that's a lot easier than having to get out mm -hmm. feeler gauges and. As long as they don't move when you tighten them. Yeah. Take a little marking pen and mark That's them. what I was thinking. I was going to mark it, mark it first before I moved them. Now the fun begins. Yes, buddy. Bought a pit bike wiring harness. Gonna need that. Gonna need this. Gonna need this. Yep, we will get this wired over this, and it should fire. Should be a piece of cake. All right, let's see what we got here. CDI, rectifier, don't need the stator. Need the starter relay. Need the coil. All right. Now, what do we got here? Yeah. Yep, that's fine. That'll work. So, just the AC is left. See, this is just how you're supposed to do this. This is fantastic. So spark plug down there. Let's just hit this. Oh, we got spark. Okay. Well, find a throttle cable and some gas. 
to make this go boom. Oh, perfect. That will do. Put a little vice grip on that and call it good. Kill switch is here ish, if not just for the engine on the floor. Alright, you'll have to pull that up probably to choke it. Ready? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's gonna run. Oh, well, you better be careful here. Considering what it started sounds, with, sounds good. Sounds too. pretty mean. No, no rattles. You must have run it straight pipe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, so, it sounded great. Yeah. Let it run one, one more time and see if we can get some. Uh, yeah, maybe set it up so we can sh yeah. something so we can shift it. Maybe tie it down. I need to figure out a better situation here. Yeah. I need to some kind of engine stand with all the electronics built into it, so we can just pop, 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 and that and that and go. Nice. All right, let's try this again and see if we get gears. Gas on. You got throttle? Throttle. Ready? Yep. Oh, one second. There we go. Now we're ready. Let me find the choker. Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa. We smoked something. Oh, our ground wire. We lost ground it. wire fell off. All right, so. Ready? Yep. I need to build a bike. Now, let's see if we got oil up top. I'll just leave the ignition off. Crap. Oh yeah, there you go. Yep. Crap. Yeah. Yeah, we got oil coming off top. Okay. All right. All right. Cool.
Wow. I'll be darned. Who would have thought? So what do you think about this engine, folks? I am so happy that this thing ran. I mean, it runs like new. Now, why am I happy? Because... Oh, I'm in the process of making some custom motor mounts to fit it in this 1975 XL125 frame. And this is going to be my new high-end trail bike. This is going to be great. I've got electric start. I've got five speeds. I've got automatic clutch. I got thumb throttle. I got reverse. Oh, this thing's going to be a blast. So yeah, you're going to want to subscribe if you want to check out the rest of the build. This is going to be a blast getting this thing all put together and painted and make it look factory fresh. Something like Honda would have built if they were as nutty as I was. But yeah, in the meantime, I guess if you want to check out some more Big Foot Bikes and Brews videos, you can click the video on the left or the right, because that's all I got for now. See you next time.